Hello, I'm doing a book review on a book I got called Exquisite Mariposa by Fiona Allison Duncan. Um, <clears throat> I bought this at my local bookstore, Deep Vellum Books. It was a part of their uh, book club series uh, for the month. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it for their book club. I had to work. Um, this was back in November, but I, you know, bought the book and read it. It's pretty fast read. Um, it's only about about 177, 175, 77 pages. Um, I I guess as far as out of like kind of the, I know good excuse me Goodreads they do a five star rating system and out of those uh, I would say personally I mean coming coming back to think on it I would give it maybe a two a two um, and I mean looking at some of the reviews here. I kind of don't see like the, the reviews on the book and kind of the like little summary they give for the book. I don't see it fitting. Um, uh, part of the book it's dealing with it's it, it's it's a strange book because it's a fiction book and the main character is Fiona Allison Duncan, F A D Fat, and that when I was reading that. I remember when I was, I was going through the book as I was reading it, I thought that was pretty odd that the main, the author put herself in the book that way. I mean, I don't know why I got too hung up on that. I think maybe it's <clears throat> basically the book, uh, the summary is saying that uh, the, the the Fiona and some of the other characters in the book are trying to uh, how do you say it uh, live their life in uh, Koreatown in Los Angeles and I, I didn't find it being about that it's mostly about Fiona and what she feels uh, specifically about something called the real um, I found it be, to be kind of rambly. She, uh, I mean, she comes. I mean, it's it's a little funny. I mean, she's coming with the idea that uh, of a pitch of a uh, reality TV show uh, because of this place. I think it was called Mariposa, La Mariposa. Um, it's, uh, you know, yeah, uh, Mary Posa, she's living there in this place. And in this place, every single space that they could fit a person in, they fitted a person in or two people. And if memory serves me correctly, in the living room, they uh, divided it up into a room for two people, for two people to live in. Um, and... I've, you know, the, the book goes back and forth between uh, Fiona's emotions, um, between, uh, you know, her own personal feelings and dealing with her situation. Uh, part of her situation is she's, and it, she's, she's an Instagram celebrity, Instagram famous. I mean, not, she mentions too that she's not so famous but you know she does have followers and actually her ending up at La Mariposa is in direct response to one of her followers saying hey you know there's this place if you want to live with us you can you know pay you know, a little we could sublet you a little space in there and uh, she goes out there and 
she's men- uh, actually, I don't know if it's mentioned, I don't think she mentions it in the book, but what you can imply from reading it is that all of these people are, I shouldn't say all of them, but a good many of them, they're trying to, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, hustle their opportunities. They're with their uh, opportunities that they have, they're trying to figure out how I can make a living, how to make money off of this. Um, I think this, from the reviews I read about this book, that it seems like um, what it's trying to do is kind of trying, to me anyway, present it as kind of like a, like a, like a young woman's uh, coming of age, a young woman's realization type book. But I felt like I connected with a lot of things in this book from her point of view, um, you know, just from, you know, the financial situations and stuff that she sees, and she's living with, uh, you know, these other people. And she's living in this area, this culture, where there's all this uh, consumerism, consumption, going on and she's of limited funds she cannot uh, afford to live that lifestyle so and at the same time she doesn't want to openly admit like hey I can't you know afford the stuff and so I mean part of the when she was out there with coming up with this show is that she's you know trying to make money trying to earn a living um, but the and uh, she doesn't go through with it. I think after the first chapter, the second chapter, you know, she tells uh, the reader that you know she doesn't. She scraps the plan, and uh, she's mentioning it, it's kind of funny because she's mentioning in the book that it's because of a certain feel like she didn't want uh, to like her own feeling that she didn't, she, she was kind of, I think basically she was feeling like she was exploiting her roommates. And it's funny that uh, there's different, uh, different parts in the book that kind of lead me to believe that, no, that's not the case that, I mean, she's, you're, you're hearing this from her point of view, that I think it's because she didn't follow through on things. And also too, um, the people who are you know, producing and, you know, actually creating the show for her are not on the, how would you say, the up and up. There was, um, and then through the book, I mean, in the first or second chapter, you'll find out that, you know, it doesn't go through. And um, she, um, it, it, throughout the book, it, she goes back and forth between instances of people she's dealing with uh, with the television company or the media company and um, one <laughs> this one uh, ex- executive or like media guy she was talking to um, he was telling her like basically this is kind of like a slumber party like it's a show like slumber party and she's like no no that's not what it is and he said okay okay and the next thing she knew in another communication with him, he had mentioned in the title of the show, uh, like, you know, Salt Slumber Party. Kind of like she was talking to him and, you know, you, she would thought her explanation registered with him, but it just went boom, like right over his head. Or, you know, maybe he just even didn't care in the first place. Um, but it seems like from... Uh, from what, from what I'm getting from reading and here, that culture in the area, um, that stuff like that happens all the time with economic opportunities that, you know, some speculations built up, you know, and, and any time it can fall through. Um, and that's off the top of my head from, let me see, I, I took some notes as well, like, like immediately after I read it. Um, Like some, yeah, I felt that there were certain 
points in the book that I felt were really good that I really connected with, especially when she's explaining uh, how she personally feels about her economic situation. Um, like that, that really connected with me, and I think it would connect with a lot of people, not just uh, you know young women. But aside from that, when and, and aside from that, I found that maybe it was a little too rambly, like th throughout the the book, like a little too like. Um, she's just talking, like, like talking, 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 and not saying anything. Um, let me see here. What else? Oh, yes, also that when I was reading the book, it reminded me of this movie I had seen uh, with... Uh, Aubrey Plaza called uh, Angry Goes West and one of the reasons why I, went, I watched the movie, that movie you know I didn't even know about this book yet but uh, the uh, Angry Goes West for some reason I don't know this is really weird Aubrey Plaza she just rubs me the wrong way I don't know um, I don't know what it is I think she's I mean, at least when, when I've seen her on television and stuff, like interviews, that she's seen, I, I get the impression she's, you know, like trying to go for an awkward persona and it's forced. I mean, that's just me. But um, from what I got, from what I read of that movie is that she like goes crazy in, in this movie. And certain, uh, but, but, but uh, we're really, uh, Ingrid Goes West, it's about social media. It's about uh, Ingrid bef going out west, basically to the west coast, to um, find a living, but also to um, befriend this other character um, who is a social media, uh, Inst Instagram star. And in a lot of ways, Ingrid gets a little bit of, a little more notoriety from being friends with her. But and also too, when I was thinking about that movie, that there's differences between um, the characters of Ingrid and you know Fiona, in that. Um, uh, the Ingrid's character in the movie is like more, totally more obsessed with the life Duncan wants where Duncan is, I mean, F F Fiona, Fiona Duncan is kind of wants it and she can attain, she, she, she in a way, she has it. I mean, she has, she's a social media and Instagram star, but she's not comfortable with that in a way. It, it's, it's really strange. Um... And I also noted about uh, what I mentioned earlier about her letting the show fall through. That, you know, when I started thinking about what I was reading in the book, I didn't think, and I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, initially reading it, I felt that she let that opportunity slip through, and that she maybe saw something wrong with, you know, the social media stuff. But, like, from a little bit of what I got from what I read, that I feel that she uh, really didn't have too much control over that going through. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, um, all in all, I mean, it's not. It's not. A, you know that it's not a bad bad book i mean there's a lot of promise i mean where the parts i felt like she didn't ramble i mean she really gripped my attention and the read readability of this book is really great i was you know even though i felt like it rambled at some points i was able to read it through and um but uh also uh, part of my career i'm a librarian and I wondered, uh, we have uh, this one database that, you know, it's available to anybody. It's called uh, 
novelist, novelist plus. Um, and it recommends books based on like, I, I've used Goodreads for that before, but I haven't had much luck. And I decided to put this book in to see which one came up, a uh, recommendation. And uh, it came up with one book called uh, My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshve. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But I read that book I read based on that recommendation, and that one is so much more better than this one right here. I mean, uh, I believe this is her first book, Fiona's first book. I mean, there's, I mean, I saw, I see, I see promise in her writing, but, um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's where I stand with it, and um, you know, I'll put links below about where you could find this book if you want to buy it. I bought it at my local bookstore, Deep Vellum Books. Um, and I think she sells it on her own website. She has her own website. Uh, and I'll put that link to, to her own, own website uh, where she also does uh, book recommendations. I believe she charges for that. I mean, you have to check the website yourself. But uh, I'll put you know link in that description. And also, too, I guess uh, I'm finished with this book if... I guess the first person who wants me to, I can mail this book to them. I mean, I'll pay the shipping, but uh, yeah. I mean, also I'll put in my address too if you wanna send me something. But um, yeah, Squizit Mariposa review. Thank you.